we might have found what is simultaneously the most underrated and overrated place in Europe. If you'd asked me a few weeks ago where I wanted to travel, I probably wouldn't have said Tenerife. For a long time, we had little interest in visiting Tenerife. As one of Europe's most popular holiday hotspots, it's hardly a hidden gem. Around 5 million tourists flock to the largest Canary Island annually for the warm weather. But the impression I've got from people who'd been was that it's just beaches, Siam Park, and big tourist resorts. Perfect for sunbathing, but not much of an adventure travel or cultural destination. But recently, I found out there's more to Tenerife than most people realise, and so we knew we had to go and discover Tenerife as you've never seen it before. Tenerife is already starting to exceed our expectations. We've just picked up a rental car from the airport. You can get rental cars for under 20 euros a day, so they're not too expensive. And we've just driven up to our accommodation, which is in the northern part of the island. And already we've seen a lot of scenery, which we just didn't expect from Tenerife. I'd always had this impression of the south of the island, which is quite arid and brown. That's where all the resorts are. But up here in the north, it's completely different. It's really luscious, very green, and it's also a lot colder as well. We're about to head out and start exploring the island but before we do I just want to show you where we're staying because it is about as far from a resort as you can get. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere and it's so tranquil all you can really hear are the sound of the birds and the wind and not really anything else. So this is the house itself and it's just a little one bedroom property but it's got everything that you need. It's got a kitchen, one bathroom and a living room as well and it's made of stone underneath this white plaster, which keeps it really nice and cool. And I really love the mixture of stone and wood in a property, which is what this is. All the doors are wooden. It's got these wooden shutters on the windows, both inside and out. And the inside of the ceiling is even wooden as well, which is quite a nice effect. But what we like the most about this place, other than the tranquility, is that it has this nice little private terrace so we can sit out here and eat while looking at these beautiful views of the ocean. If you'd like to stay somewhere like this, we found this place on booking.com just by looking on the map view for places that weren't near to any big towns or villages. This particular place is called Finca Los Cerelos Casas Rurales. And the word Finca essentially means property in a rural area. So if you want to stay in a rural area, look for the word Finca. We've come to a place called Ramla de Castro, which I believe is a nature reserve, or at least it's some sort of protected area. And I am walking around, having a look around. I've left Craig at the top. There's a couple of viewpoints because the path down that I'm walking on is quite steep and uneven. There are quite a lot of different trails around here. I've just taken a couple of random ones because I don't really know where I'm going. But I first of all went to that yellow house over there. Then I went to some springs, which were unfortunately a bit dried up. And now I've come down to this fort here, which has a really good view down over the water. And like down to this beach down here. But there's a lot of different options you can take. There's some longer ones as well, which I think go to different viewpoints. We've now come to a restaurant, we're in Puerto de la Cruz and this restaurant is called Restaurant Rodillo and we've ordered some traditional Canarian foods. And it's just arrived, so here I have Coneos al Samoreos, which is a type of rabbit stew in a gravy-like sauce. It's quite good. We've also got a local grilled fish called a chopper. And on the side, it comes with papas arrugadas, which are a wrinkly potato, which is grown here on the island. And it apparently goes wrinkly because it's boiled in a very salty water. And then the water is left to dry completely. And as it dries, the potatoes go very wrinkly. The potatoes also come with some sauces, which are called mojo. And there's lots of very common ones. We've got two here, and I believe we've got one which is based on red peppers. It's an orangey red color. And we also got one which looks very herby, and I believe that is based on cilantro. Overall, we enjoyed all of the Canarian food. There were some really great flavours in there. But one thing we did find with all of the dishes was that they were all just very, very salty. So by the end of the meal, we were a little bit salted out, which was a shame. We have come to Tino Rural Park today. And as we were driving up here, it was super green. But all of a sudden, we've just turned a corner and now it is this ultra barren red coloured landscape. It is pretty chilly up here too. It was about 26 degrees earlier on in the day. And now up here, it is about 15 degrees. It is super quiet up here. On the drive up, it was just single track road and we didn't meet anybody at all coming the other way. And now that I'm walking up here, there is nobody else around, just me. The cloud has just completely rolled in behind me. 
One minute we're in a really green landscape, then it's red, and now down here it's suddenly really yellow and dry. So I think there's supposed to be a viewpoint somewhere, there was a sign for it where I started the trail, but there's just loads of paths around and no signposts on any of the paths, so I'm just kind of wondering, I'm not really sure where I'm going to end up. Although to be honest there's kind of viewpoints everywhere, so I don't know if you really need to go to a specific viewpoint. I'm not sure if I found the viewpoint or not, but all the views were very nice anyway. But I'm gonna start heading back now because I've been walking around for about an hour and Craig's just been waiting for me in the car this whole time. So I think it's time to move on to the next spot. I thought I could hear the sound of cowbells and at first I thought it was just random things jingling in the wind but as I come around the corner I've just noticed a massive herd of goats just walking out into the middle of the road. That is the biggest herd of goats I have ever seen and I'm glad I decided to turn around and head back to the car when I did because they're now walking on the path I was walking on so I would have come face to face with them and apparently goats are actually the most dangerous animal on Tenerife. There is a little village up here called Tena Alto and as we were driving through the village we spotted a sign for this little shop selling local products like honey and this cheese which is made here. So we just had to go in and check it out and cheese is a really big thing here across all of the Canary Islands and in particular goat's cheese. So presumably the cheeses here were made from that massive group of goats that we just passed earlier. So we just had to go and get some. We are on our way to a little village called Masca, but we've just stopped off at a viewpoint and this viewpoint is called Mirador de Baracan and I would highly recommend stopping here. There are some really great views on multiple different angles and the views are definitely better than the views I got on my walk earlier. We've never been to Hawaii, but it looks just like the pictures we've seen around here. It's really beautiful. We are glad that we've decided to rent a car here because I don't know how we'd be able to get around to some of these places without one. However, it is worth knowing that there are a lot of narrow roads here in Tenerife, a lot of steep roads and a lot of hairpin bends. We are now walking into the village of Masca, which is a little village which is perched on the top of a cliff and there's sheer drops on each side and then this big like rock in front of it and uh, apparently it is known as the Machu Picchu of Tenerife so I guess you can kind of see that with that big rock in front of it. But to get down here you have to park up on the main road and then walk down. There is an access road but I think it's probably only for residents um, but we're actually walking down the road rather than the footpath because it is so steep and uneven the road is a little bit more gradual and slightly easier. This is quite the spot for a village we have got mountains on all sides of us all around and then the village itself is just perched on this little thin strip of land with steep drops down on each side. While we've been here in Tenerife we've come across a new type of graffiti which we've not seen anywhere else and that is cactus graffiti. We have just caught our first glimpse of the volcano El Tede. We've not seen it so far because it has been in the cloud the whole time, but we've got a different angle today and it's visible from this side. But there is actually a whole national park up there, so we're going to go up there either tomorrow or the next day. Last night we went to have dinner in a town called Garachico, which is on the coast, and we went to a restaurant called Restaurant Rocamar. And to start, we shared a Canarian vegetable stew, and for Maine, we had paella. And now today we have come to Anaga Rural Park, which is another one of Tenerife's green spaces. Our first stop is a viewpoint, Mirador de Giardina. And if it was a clear day, which it's not, I think you'd be able to see the volcano from here. We are now on a walk called the Path of the Senses, which is a boardwalk going through the trees. There are plenty of other hiking trails in Anaga besides the one that we did, but we've instead decided to come down to the coast now because you can't go to an island and not come down to the sea. So the beach that we're now at is called Playa de Roc de la Bodegas and it is a really nice scenic beach. It is very, very quiet compared to most beaches here on Tenerife. 
sand it is also a black sand beach as well rather than golden sand and because it's black sand it's also actually really warm under your feet it's not like burning sand when it's really hot and the sand gets burning it's not particularly warm right now but because it's black the sand has sort of absorbed the heat so it's quite pleasant to walk on even though it's not that warm and the water on the beach is also pretty nice as well it's not warm but it's not cold either it's quite comfortable I'll definitely be tempted to go for a swim and there's loads of people out there surfing right now as well That was nice and refreshing. So now comes the city of La Laguna, which used to be the capital of Tenerife, and the whole of the town centre is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we've come out here and we're at a tapas bar called La Concreteria. Our first tapas dish is grilled goat's cheese with a selection of mojos, which are different types of sauces. It's really good. The goat's cheese isn't too powerful and it's like nice and sweet from the honey. It's a good combination. The next dish we have got is a classic tapas item, patas bravas. Always a good choice. The next dish we have is croquettes. And croquettes are really popular here in the Canary Islands. So we've got 12 croquettes in six different flavours. We don't really know which croquette is which, so it's going to be a surprise. I think sweet potatoes. I think we're both in agreement that the blue cheese and pear sweet potato croquettes were the nicest. And our last tapas dish is eggs and potatoes with cheese and pulled pork. It's good. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think this is probably the best meal that we've had so far in Tenerife, but the tapas portions were a bit bigger than we were expecting, so we're both very full. If you want to withdraw money from the ATM here in Tenerife, a lot of them have transaction fees and we even saw one that had a fee of seven euros per transaction, which is kind of crazy, but this bank here, Bank of Marsh, doesn't have any fees. We are heading up to Teide National Park today, which is where you'll find the volcano El Teide. But the whole time we've been here in Tenerife, we've barely seen a glimpse of the volcano because it's been in the cloud the whole time. But right now we've just been driving up and up and up and up and we're just passing through the clouds. So hopefully we'll catch a glimpse of the volcano very soon. We have made it into the National Park now and the first thing we're going to do is check out a couple of viewpoints that are supposed to have good views of the volcano. So the first viewpoint that we're at is called Mirador de El Roc de Caramujo. Now we're at the second viewpoint, this one is Mirador de Alto de Guamaso. We then headed to the visitor centre at El Portillo, where you can learn more about the history of El Teide, Tenerife and the Canary Islands and there's also a couple of short walks there that you can take and learn more about the flora and fauna in the National Park. This National Park is at elevations of 2,000 metres and above and because of the altitude it is a lot colder up here than it is down in the rest of the island. According to the car it's about 14 degrees but if you are in the direct sunlight it actually feels a lot warmer and it's still warm enough to wear shorts and t-shirts. It does feel colder if you're in the shade but I think there is a very high risk of getting sunburn up here because of the altitude and the fact that there's a lot of sunlight and we're above the clouds. We then headed deeper into the park to experience the otherworldly landscape. At 3,718 metres, the top of the El Teide volcano is the highest point in Spain. This rock formation is Roque Sinchado, and with El Teide in the background, it's one of the most famous views in Tenerife, but it's also the busiest spot that we've found ourselves in this week. Thousands of years ago, there was actually a bigger volcano here before El Teide was the main volcano, but that volcano collapsed and it's now left a massive caldera, which is a big crater, and I believe we are driving through this crater right now. You can go up to the crater of El Teide, there is a cable car which will take you up there, but tickets cost 40 euros each, so we didn't really think it would be worth that. But if you do want to do it, you have to book tickets in advance, and apparently how far in advance will depend on the time of year, but the woman in the visitor centre said it can range from a few hours in advance to about a week in advance. And you can also hike up Teide as well, however you need to book permits for that, and apparently you need to do that several months in advance. We just stopped off at a viewpoint called Mirador de las Narices del Teide and it's supposed to be a really great viewpoint however unfortunately today the cloud has come in and we're now back under the cloud so we can't really see anything at all. Since the cloud had come in we decided to head back down and we stopped off at the village of Santiago del Teide and we had to go to the Heladeria because you can't go away without going for an ice cream roast. Something that you might not know about Tenerife is that Venezuelan food is popular here. 
We've never tried Venezuelan cuisine before, so for our final evening in Tenerife, we decided to take the opportunity to try it. We're trying three different dishes, an empanada, an arepa, which is a kind of cornbread fried and then filled with whatever you choose, kind of like a crispy burger, and a chachapa, which is a sweet corn pancake that was also filled. Unfortunately, today it's time to head back to the airport, but we have about 30 minutes before we need to return the car, and our accommodation owner gave us this paste called Alma Grote, which is cheese-based. So we've brought some fresh bread and we've driven over to Arco de Tajao, which is a natural arch near to Tenerife South Airport for a quick lunch. And that's a wrap. I hope we've tempted you to explore beyond the results next time you're in Tenerife.